Hello and welcome to my channel. Roisin Kiori here and today I am going to share with you my basic kit. Now I say basic but it's the good stuff. You can get a lesser quality set of watercolours of course. This set is artist quality. It's not student quality, it's artist quality and you'll immediately notice the difference in the quality of colour as we're going to see when I swatch out the colours that you'll find in this little box. This is my A6 portrait format watercolour paper sketchbook. It's 200 grams in weight and I'm clipping down the two sides with these magnetic clips. Without those clips, your pages can bounce and flap in the wind, which is very annoying. So here's a little drawing of my paint box, the inside, divided into six. And it's got these two little areas where you can mix paint. And of course, they fold in. They're the actual lids of the paint box. There's plenty of room to mix your colours. So what have we got? We've got phthalo green, blue shade. We've got sap green. We've got Aquarius green. We have got yellow ochre, burnt sienna and cypress burnt umber. Then we've got Aquarius yellow, Aquarius orange, cherry quinacridone red. Ultramarine Intense, Phthalo Blue, Green Shade and Paints Grey. First we've got Phthalo Green. It's a really pretty, clear, clean, blue-green colour. Very rarely used on its own, but a wonderful mixing colour with all kinds of other colours in your box. Sap Green is great for foliage. Again, I don't usually tend to use it unmixed, but it's a beautiful, clear, bright green. Now here's one that I do use unmixed. I use it straight from the pan. It's called Aquarius Green. It's a granulating, sludgy, olivey green, and it's brilliant for foliage and all kinds of things. Yellow ochre. Now you can't be without yellow ochre, this golden brown. It's great for skin tones. It's great mixed with greens for foliage and nature subjects. Same for burnt sienna, this orangey, ruddy brown. Very, very useful for anything to do with nature and for skin tones as well. Cypress Burnt Umber, a lovely dark brown. Really love that shade. Aquarius Yellow. Now, I'm not too hung up on the particular shade of yellow, but as long as it's a clean, clear yellow, it'll be great for mixing. Aquarius Orange, beautiful burnt orange colour, and I use it a lot. Cherry Quinacridone Red, a soft pinky colour and it's fantastic mixed with yellow ochre burnt sienna or burnt umber for skin tones and we've got ultramarine intense a lovely clear clean blue then we've got phthalo blue green shade great for skies and lovely mixed with phthalo green for lovely turquoise and finally we've got Payne's grey depending on the concentration with which you mix it you can have anything from the lightest of greys to the deepest of blacks nearly and oh what's this magenta. When I sell a box of paints, I always include an extra little gift of a pan of magenta because this shocking rich pink is makes the most beautiful purples when mixed with blues. Now, what about my favourite pen? This is a, a Sailor 55 degree Fudu pen and the nib is angled at 55 degrees, um, which makes for a very versatile line. And we'll discover that as we go on. You'll see it in the drawings that I'm doing. This is Roaring Klingner's Sketch Ink. Just going to fill my pen, show you how I do it. Now I'm filming from above, so I hope you can see what I'm doing. But anyway, you unscrew the barrel and inside you'll find the converter. So that's different from the cartridge that comes with the pen. And you screw the little black thing at the top so that the plastic thing inside the see-through bit is all the way to the bottom. Dunk it into the ink and twist the little thing at the top in the opposite direction. Get rid of as much excess ink as you can on the side of the bottle and then grab a piece of absorbent paper and clean off your pen before you put the barrel on because ink can be a little on the messy side as you can imagine. Now you will find that your pen floods a little bit when you first fill it up. The line is much thicker than you might like so have a little bit of scrap paper to hand and you can give it a little scribble around on that to get rid of that flooding. So there's my, my 55 degree foodie pen, a pen I wouldn't be without. And I have a number of them in my pencil case at any one time because I like to draw. Drawing is very much a thing for me. So I like to have lots of different colours of ink in my in my kit at any one time. 
Here's my little drawing and you can see the nib is bent at the tip. There you go. Now we'll paint that in a minute when the ink is all dry. I do love my beautiful brushes, but if you are on the move and you don't want to have to bend down and dip your brush in a pot of water all the time, then a water brush with a little reservoir in the handle where you can that you can fill with water. Look at that. I'm going to go fill it, show you what it looks like when it's finished. Now, the only thing when it's full, the only thing I'd say that is against this little brush, I love it because it's small and fat and dinky, but it is very small and it runs out of water quite fast. But if you can't sit down for any reason when you're sketching or if you're somewhere where they don't like open pots of water, like a museum or something like that, then it's ideal. Or even on the train, somewhere where you just want to scribble, scribble, scribble. And I will say that I always have three of these little water brushes filled in my pencil case at any one time because, number one, they run out of water very quickly. But number two, it's good to have a few with you because changing colour from a light colour to a dark colour isn't necessarily straightforward. Well, it's easy enough, but you can end up losing a lot of water that you have in your water brush, squeezing it through to flush out the colour. So it's much more efficient if you just bring a few brushes with you. The trouble is I never know which one I've been using for which colour, so I might actually put some labels on them so that I know. This is the Sakura brand of water brush. I really like it. It's brilliant. In fact, it's the one I supply with my basic kit because I've tried a lot of water brushes and they can be inclined to leak. It's very frustrating. If these ones don't leak, they just behave. I've used a broad tip brush on the water brush because I don't like my lines too fiddly, whether I'm drawing or whether I'm painting. The next thing I never leave home without is my white gel pen. So I suppose it's the equivalent of a tool to rub out any mistakes that you might have because with ink you can't rub out a line it's not like a pencil so what you can do is hide it now it's only for little tiny little bits like the stray little line that you don't like i tend to use the size 10 because anything less than that is a little bit fiddly and won't give you much much white gel acrylic it's acrylic this is also the sakura brand just because it's the best one I've tried. Now you saw at the beginning of the video that I used some magnetic clips to keep my pages down. Very, very frustrating to forget these clips when you go out because you do need to keep your pages down when you're sketching. A good quality paper tends to spring up when you're drawing. And not alone do these clips keep your pages nice and secure and stops them from flapping in the wind. But also, if you use them with the magnetic side, side up, then you can attach your paint box with a little click onto the magnetic side, assuming your paint box is made of metal. And it'll be quite happy. It won't fall off. And between that and a water brush, you'll be perfectly secure and comfortable standing up and getting the whole sketch done standing up, which is very satisfying. Not to mention convenient. All right, time for some ink. This is one of my favourite brands, Deatramentis. It's called Document Ink. It's completely waterproof. Well, basically, it's bulletproof. It doesn't clog my pen. It just behaves. I love it. I highly recommend it. And it comes in lots of lovely different colours. I mentioned that Paints Grey is great for all kinds of shades of grey and black. That lid is painted with Paints Grey. So if you don't use too much water with it, you're going to get a colour that's pretty close to black. A little bit less water, as you can see, for the, the glass of the bottle. And you'll get a good range of greys. Here's my favourite colour in the Diatramentis range. It's just a rich, dark brown. And I really like it, not just for organic and natural and nature -y sort of sketches, but for all kinds of things. I love it. When it comes to your choice of sketchbook, you will have a hard time finding one that stands out from all the others. Now, I've tried a lot of different sketchbook brands, but the Hannah Muller brand is my favourite by a long way. And the two little books that I go for are the 200 gram and the 250 gram paperweight. 
not quite sure what those are in pounds, but you can see from the pages that they're good and thick and they don't bend or buckle when you use watercolour with them. And what's more, you can really get a feel for the beauty of the paint on this type of paper. Really love it. I go for the A6, which I know is absolutely tiny and I do sacrifice sometimes a little bit of my composition just because the page is so small. But what it lacks in area, it really makes up for inconvenience. So here's that page again. I've added the numbers of the colours in question so you know what they are. My basic kit and a fabulous one. It can be really useful to see how the colours mix together as individuals. So if you'd like to see that, well, just say so in the comments and I will make a video dedicated to that. Thanks to Roman Schmal for his fabulous paints and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.